I squared C stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit and is a widely used serial communication protocol that allows multiple digital devices to communicate with each other over a two-wire bus. It is a standard for interconnecting various electronic components in embedded systems and commonly found in microcontrollers, sensors, and other integrated circuits. For this video, I'll be using a 2-series MSO, but the setup and operation for I2C is identical on several series of Tektronix's oscilloscopes, all of which can be equipped with I2C bus decoding and triggering. Data and clock are the two signals in the I2C bus. The channel 1 probe is connected to the clock signal and channel 2 to the data line. After connecting the signals from the board, I'll configure the I2C bus decode setup. To add a serial bus, click on Math Reference Bus Badge, then Add New Bus. Select the bus type as I2C. Any of the analog or digital inputs, active math, or reference signals can be used as a source for I2C bus. Set the S clock or serial clock to channel 1 and set SDA or serial data to channel 2. Set the S clock threshold to 2 volts. Set the SDA threshold to 2 volts. Setting the correct threshold is important to get the right value. It helps to define the voltage level to output as logic 1 or 0. I could also use auto measurements to get the amplitude of the signal as a guide for the voltage threshold setting. Now I'll set the read-write bit in address to no, display format to bus and waveforms, and the decode format to hex. Now I'll take a look at the decoded signal. The green bar symbol represents the start of packet. Start is a high to low transition on the data signal while the clock is high. Address packets are shown in yellow boxes. If I zoom in, I can see that R is used to indicate read and W is used to indicate write. Data packets are shown in cyan boxes. The red bar symbol represents the stop packet. Stop is a low to high transition on the data signal while the clock is high. Also notice the digital waveforms below the bus waveform, representing the clock and data signals after they have been compared to their threshold values. I can also leverage the results table to analyze the decoded signal. To add the results table, go to the bus one configuration menu and turn on the results table. If I tap one of the rows in the results table, I see that the zoom box is repositioned to correspond to the selected row. To close out the results table, press the X. Now configure the trigger settings. Notice that the edge trigger has positioned a rising edge of channel 1 and the trigger point marked by the orange trigger icon at the top of the display. To change this, open the trigger settings configuration menu. Set trigger type to bus and notice the source is set to bus 1, I squared C. You can trigger on start, repeat, start, stop, or other events. Let's choose address. Under hex, I'll enter 50. Now when I start acquiring, I should see the trigger point at the address 50. Once I've acquired a serial signal, I may want to find all the occurrence of a certain event. To do this, I can use the search function. I'll use the search function to find all the instances of a start of event. First, I'll add a new search. Ensure the search type is bus, and source is set to bus one. For mark on, I can select start, address, or any other event in the list. Let's stick with start. Now if I zoom out, I can see that each start event has been marked with a purple triangle. Next time you're using I2C, you can rely on Tektronix MSOs to help you decode, analyze, and troubleshoot your embedded systems to get the insights you need.